On a um, 35,000 kilometer lap or figure eight of, of Australia, you do have to do some uh, planning for uh, contingency. So this is our just in case video and I'll cover a few um, topics today. So the one is around uh, you know, breakdowns, um, tires, how we manage that. The other is around personal safety. Um, and then we'll cover uh, communications and also a little bit about charging. I have covered charging in other videos, uh, but we will cover it a little bit here. So obviously one of the key things, especially for a Tesla, this may not be true for all cars, is that we didn't have a spare. Um, and I think it really is recommended that when you're traveling in the Outback that you do carry a spare. So we bought uh, this model here, uh, it was about $700. The only problem with the Tesla is where to put it. So there's a lot of hidey holes and cubby holes where you can store things, but nothing big enough for a tire. So we had to install it uh, just behind the driver's seat. Luckily, we didn't have any passengers in the back. We did have Barney, um, but that was, you know, that was fine. Uh, we never had to use the tire, so that's a good thing. We've done, yeah, we're now in southeast Queensland here. We've done over 35,000 Ks and have yet to use it. So that's a, a good thing. We did also bring some repair kits. Um, so sometimes, you know, it's a bit easier just to repair the tire you've got on the, on the wheel rather than fully replace it. Uh, so we got this goo kit, which also came with an inflator. So that was handy. And these uh, things that you can, which are becoming quite popular where you can either plug or screw into, into holes. So we had a cone, which we used in lieu of a safety triangle. Um, and then we had uh, two forms of roadside assistance. So one was with the NRMA, who are affiliated with the um, RACQ. Um, and that you know, gave us coverage, would have given us coverage if we'd broken down um, you know, anywhere in Australia. Um, so that, but again, thankfully it didn't have to use. The uh, Tesla does come with a roadside assistance. And we have used that with our previous car. We broke down on the Hume Highway, had a flat, and they sent out a um, contractor to actually come and install a spare for us. Um, so it's a pretty good service. The only thing is it's kind of restricted. You don't really, Tesla don't really say exactly where it covers you in Australia and where it doesn't. Um, there's wording around it being within 70 kilometers of a service center, I think it is. Uh, but again, it's hard to sort of gauge how much coverage that gives you. But I think in the major metropolitan areas, it'll probably be you know, fine. Obviously you do have to wait while the contractor comes out. Um, but yeah, so there's that uh, roadside assistance as well. We brought along some spare water um, and used these boxes of water, which is kind of handy because you can remove the, the bag inside from the box. And then the bag can kind of just sort of sit in some small pocket um, in the car and not take up too much room. So again, you know, with the Model Y, there's and yeah, even plenty of other cars, but the Model Y, there's lots of hidey holes. So we found this spot uh, under a compartment to lay this water bag. Again, didn't have to use it, but it was always a good uh, insurance policy. We did also bring uh, camping gear, um, tent, sleeping bag, a small billy um, and a thing to heat up the billy, a little uh, butane stove. Um, again, we didn't have to use these in anger. Barney and I did use the tent as an opportunity on the Nullarbor to camp one night. Um, but yeah, we didn't really, didn't really need it. And so on to personal safety, uh, the coach, she actually took a first aid course. I probably should have done one as well. Uh, and we brought along a first aid kit, but we decided not to actually uh, use a store-bought one. The coach actually made uh, one especially for our trip. You know, maybe it's more for our personal circumstances. Um, but for example, you know, she had stuff in there to cover snake bites. Um, you know, in Australia, there's quite a few um, snakes around. In fact, we saw a few. Here's an example of one on top of a urinal that kind of surprised me when uh, when taking a leak. Um, so yeah, this, the first aid kit was um, uh, useful. Again, we didn't use it in anger, um, you know, maybe other than the odd Band-Aid or whatever. Uh, we also brought along these personal lights, uh, portable lights that um, I had got. They were very handy actually. Um, they have all sorts of modes. 
in their sort of, they have a, like a night light mode and they'll last for like 48 hours. So we often use them in accommodation where the lighting was poor at night. Um, I've used them for uh, videos to, to as sort of stage lights. Um, yeah, they've got these little um, mounting points on them so you can stick them on tripods. They're magnetic, you can stick them to a fridge. Yeah, found these uh, uh, really useful and use them you know, all the time. I was just using them last night. The dog was sleeping outside, bit dark, left him on a little nightlight. So onto communications. Uh, as you may have seen from some of my other videos, we brought along a Starlink. Um, so that was very useful. In fact, we have two of them. One of them is in its original uh, uh, format, not broken down at all. So for that one, we have been able to use it with like a 12 volt uh, inverter. So in the car, if we were on the you know, in an outback location with absolutely no connectivity, we could plug it into a 12 volt uh, converter. The other one um, that I did hack, and again, you guys, some of you guys may have seen these, I converted to use 12 volt directly from the car. But either way, that, you know, they would have um, uh, helped us if we needed to reach out for help. On the cell phone server side, um, Telstra, you know, have a name for, I guess, having the biggest coverage in Australia. And while they you know, have numbers like 98% or whatever, they're actually just quoting uh, the populated areas. Um, so when you actually look at a real map of coverage, you know, there is a huge swathes of Australia that have no connectivity at all. And even on the, some of the main roads, like the Nullarbor, once you left a roadhouse within 30, 50 Ks, you know, the, the connectivity, the Telstra connectivity in that case just, just died. So you would drive for hundreds of kilometers with essentially no mobile service at all. Some areas, Optus um, do have a slightly bigger, better signal than, than Telstra. So we did have, have a second uh, spare phone that was on Optus. So I think between those two carriers, if there is a signal out there, you should be covered. But again, don't fully rely on them. There are, like I said, stretches where there is no connectivity at all. So on the uh, charging side, uh, we carried this RFID card. So if we've got to a charging station, again, where there's no connectivity, it does happen occasionally, at least you could tap and go uh, with the RFID card. Essentially, you don't need any cell service for your, for your phone. So I do, I have um, another video where I cover what we brought uh, for charging. And so that's linked somewhere over here. Um, but I will do a follow-up video where I'll tell you what we actually did use while we brought a fair few connectors and plugs and whatever uh, we didn't use all of them um, so I'll, I will do a summary video towards the end of our trip when we get to Tasmania of what we did and didn't use but anyway in the meantime you can have a look at this video um, and for a lot of things on our trip again because everything was packed in the car uh, you know we had to be quite uh, uh, efficient with our space many things had double duty an example is the charging bag um, you know, Barney getting a bit old, um, you know, on some of the longer walks would complain and say, no, nope, I want to be carried. So we actually converted this charging bag into a dog, uh, a dog carrier, which was kind of useful. You know, for our trip, we really didn't have any um, issues where we had to reach out or, you know, change a tire or whatever. So that, that you know, thankful for, for that. But it was interesting though that we did actually help somebody who was stuck out um, in far north uh, western Australia. Um, and this person was actually driving a petrol car um, in the most, one of the most remote spots. There's only like one roadhouse on a 600 kilometer stretch of road. Um, and so if you're not you know, fully fueled up and you miss that one roadhouse, you can be in all sorts of strife. And this person was. They, um, Thought there was a second roadhouse at the Pardue Roadhouse, um, but it was actually taken out by a cyclone last year. So there is only the one roadhouse currently, which is Sandfire. So you really do need to plan ahead, even for a petrol car. So this poor person, their fuel tank flashed up red, um, and they were over 130 kilometers from Port Hedland, which was the nearest town. And so, yes, yeah, sought our help. Unfortunately, we couldn't take a, a, a jerry can and siphon off any petrol. Um, but I did say to them, you know, look, your car does have some reserve. And because we're so far away from any populated area, why don't we start driving towards a populated area, which is what we did. And they were actually able to drive all the way into Port Hedland. 
So this is 130 Ks on the red um, and made it on the smell of an oily rag. Um, so it was good that we could help somebody else out there, but it was kind of ironic that it was an EV driver helping a petrol uh, driver. So that's sort of the highlights of, of what we brought the, for just in case. Um, I'm keen to hear what uh, maybe we should have brought. Um, yeah, so please leave a comment below and um, stay safe out there. Over and out.